Hey, this is Tim again. Hope you're keeping well. Um, this is lab number two for mechanical systems. And uh, this is what we're going to get done this week, all right? So number one, um, I'm going to teach you how to measure current. Now, I know some of you don't even understand what the word current means. We'll get into it. Don't worry. The next thing is how are we going, how to change the direction of a DC motor. Okay, and then our third objective is you're going to build a rig for the next lab, which is we're going to use the gears, the spur gears. Okay, so they're the three things that we're doing. So let's let's worry about the first one. How do we measure current? Now, um, I'm after ripping this lovely little picture off the internet, and um, <clears throat> hopefully at this stage you understand the relationship between voltage applied and the speed of the motor if we want the motor to turn faster what do we do we pump up the voltage and it will it it will have a higher rpm now uh, how do we measure current and why do we want why do we even want to measure current um why do we want to measure current in a dc motor well let's think about that um why do you need to measure current Before we ask the why, let's let's talk about what current is. Your your electrical instructor will do a better job of this than I will, but they will probably use something like a water analogy to explain the difference between voltage and current. Okay, let's look at a pump in in a water system. A pump can could be turned by hand. It could be turned by a motor, but essentially there's some sort of external thing that's turning this propeller or this impeller or this turbine. Basically, it spins around fast and it basically pushes, it, it applies a pressure to the water. If this thing spins around fast, we get more pressure in the water line. What do I mean by pressure? Imagine, imagine when you put your thumb on the 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 holes you're 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 you can get the the water to to kick out further because you're blocking the orifice okay that's a terrible that's a terrible explanation so anyway the the turbine turns and there's more water pressure here if there's more if there's more water pressure the water will flow okay so the water flows around the circuit um the voltage in in our system which is a battery is like the pump the battery provides the battery provides energy or it it it, it causes a potential difference which allows current to flow the pump is like the battery the water is the water flowing around the circuit is like the current so um hopefully you're not too confused by that okay um so current flows um i'm going to leave that up to your electrical instructor to, to answer all those questions getting your head around current and voltage i i, I think that's true that was tricky enough for me um and i don't know if i'm helping you or not so we have a power supply And it kind of looks like this and we have a plus and we have a negative just like here just like that and in our circuit it goes round and we connected it to a motor and i'm obviously not using the correct symbols um because i'm not an electrical instructor so i don't have to but anyway um at current the power supply gives us our voltage and the current flows in the circuit around like that okay the symbol for current is i so when i'm measuring voltage when i'm when i'm when i'm trying to measure the voltage and we want to see if this thing is really kicking out 7.5 i take my multimeter and i go from com and this voltage one and i tie it in like so 
okay? And I'm probing this, and I'm measuring the voltage along the circuit. This is a parallel um, measurement. I'm measuring in parallel. Let's do that. Let's do. Let's take. Let's do a voltage measurement before we talk about getting a current measurement. Um. Okay. How are we going? To, we're going to measure the the voltage. All right. So I have the the AC DC power supply. <clears throat> I'm going to get my probes out of my bag. And I'm going to put the black one in COM. And I'm going to put the red one here. Now, do you remember? DC voltage. A, come on, you yeah. AC voltage. It's at telling us right there. Resistance, and then this is to measure contact. So don't worry. Look, we're going to put it on DC voltage. I'm going to plug this bad boy in. And it's going to start spinning now in a sec. There we go. I'm going to take my black and my red and connect connect them to the two terminals. And it's measuring 7.82. Now, I'm going to say something to you. I'm measuring. I'm measuring in parallel. I my the circuit. Let's look at the actual circuit. The current flows out of the positive. It goes into the motor. It comes out of the motor, and it goes to the negative, and that's our circuit, just like this. Okay. Whenever you measure voltage, the voltmeter doesn't have to be in the circuit okay whenever we measure current and this this is just the way it is and um, you have to break this circuit so we're measuring voltage here that's easy if we want to measure current and see how much current is flowing in the motor is it going to be a lot? Is it a small amount? How much is it? We have to we have to break it. We have to break the circuit. And if I'm doing a crap job of explaining this, there are millions of millions. There's thousands of videos of this on YouTube, how to measure current. Okay. But I hope hopefully I'm not doing too bad of a job. Anyway, power supply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the symbol. A. Now, another symbol for current is amps. Okay, we're going to measure. We're going to measure the amps, but are we going to measure? It doesn't matter. We can, it, it says we can measure DC and AC amperage. That's nice. So we're going to put our amp amp meter. I'm I'm we're, I'm calling this. This is a multimeter. It can measure. If it's measuring voltage, I will call it a voltmeter. If it's measuring current, I can also call it an amp meter. If it's measuring resistance, what the hell is that called? If it measures resistance, I can't remember. Impedance meter, don't worry about that. All right, let's just stick with me. I know you're, I know I'm confusing you. All right, and there's our motor, and it goes back around, so the current flows in this direction. So how the hell do I how do I break the circuit? Number one, if you're measuring current, you leave your calm where you want. Take this red. Now, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to get rid of these probes. And in your kit, we have these lovely crocodile clips. I'm going to put the black one in calm. I'm going to put the red one in 10 amp. Okay. 
I have to break this circuit. And how do I do that? I so look at the positive. Ollie, where's my screwdriver? Right here. I have my screwdriver here. Uh, the positive's coming out and it goes into the ammeter. No problem, we can do that. So the positive comes out and it goes straight into the ammeter. Now how are we going to do this? I have these little clips. And in your kits, I did give you some wire. Okay, I have this ribbon cable. And look, the ribbon cable, I'm gonna just take a little snip here I have like 30 wires at once here. Do you see what I just did there? I'm after breaking, well, I wanted to break only two, but it's all right. I can rip off two wires. Like so. I'm gonna put my teeth in between the black and the brown. You can't see that. And look what I just did, I split it in two. And then I pull between the two. Beautiful. Are you watching? On this side, I'm going to put my teeth in. My, I don't know, is it my incisor or my canine teeth? All right. So voltage is causing the current to flow. It's the power behind the scene. The resulting is current will flow around the circuit. Now watch, I'm just gonna trim this. I'm just grabbing it a little bit. I'm holding it with my left hand and I'm stripping it. You're gonna cut that loads of times until you, you f figure out the power that it needs to be. And here, and here. All right. Okay, I'm gonna actually pull these apart. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip on here like so. And where am I gonna put this? I'm gonna put this to the plus, the plus of the power supply. Like so. So we come out with that positive. Tighten that up. So where are we going? We come out of the power supply, fo follow that little line around. It's going in to the multimeter, the 10 amp. It really doesn't matter which one. The black one comes out and we need to connect that. I'm gonna connect this to the, to the red and it doesn't really matter. So let's just look at this circuit for a second Ele electricity's the the cur the electricity's coming out of the power supply right here let's follow this black wire to this red um crocodile clip alligator clip whatever the hell it's called that goes into the power that goes into the multimeter now do you see any issues there right now i'm measuring voltage but i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to bring this now, your, your electrical instructor is going to tell you the difference between amps, milliamps, and microamps. Microamps for very, very small stuff. Milliamps for small stuff. If you're trying to measure a voltage, just amps will do the job. So I'm going to bring this over to amps, okay? Screw it. Let's put on milliamps and just see what happens. You're going to love this. What, what is a milliamp? It's... It's... It's one multiplied by 10 to the minus three. I'm glad I'm not teaching electronics. It, this, is, this is one by 10 to the minus three is point zero zero one. I think, one, two, three, point zero zero one of an amp. Okay, but look, let, let me confuse you. Let's just keep it on amps. Amps is what we want. We're gonna plug it, I'm gonna plug it in. My power supply is at 7.5. Okay, and right now the motor is drawing 0.2 of an amp. 
it's drawn 0.2 of an amp. Okay, let's take and plug that for a second. It's drawing, so the current flowing in this, in this system is 0.2 of an amp. It's flowing around there. Now, um, let's look. I want to, I don't know if you can see this, but I want, I'm going to look, I'm going to print it out, but I'm going to go VEX 393 motor. All right. And I'm going to go down to outputs. And I'm going to go print. I'm going to print sheet number two. That's what I want. Pages, custom, sheet number two. Let's just have a look at this just for a second. Um, why? Let's let's go back to the first question. Why do we need to be able to measure current? Can you even see that? Right here, it says two wire motor three nine three. The free speed is 100 RPM, and we measured that. It was around 100 RPM. The stall current is 4.8 amps. The free current is saying 0.37 amps. So let's, let's, let's just write them words down. Free current is 0.37 amps. Stall current is what does it say 4.8 amps now um <clears throat> we can tell a lot what we can tell a lot of, of the motor by what what's what the current is doing is, is what i'm trying to say now when this when this motor is when this motor is not powering anything and it's just doing its own thing it's got nothing attached to it the free current should be about 0.37 amps. Now we got 0.2 amps, and believe it or not, that's pretty close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in, and I'm going to grab hold of this. Now I'm I'm not that strong. I'm going to grab hold of it with this thing, and you're going to see with the well, what what does this stall current means? The stall current means when I'm grabbing this and I don't let it move. And all, and this thing is sucking in juice, sucking in current like a good thing. It should be around 4.8 amps. That's what that means. The motor, the motor is a lot is a lot like me when I not that I get not get up on a treadmill very much, but when I'm run when I'm walking on the treadmill, I don't need to suck in a whole lot of air. But if you ramp that tr treadmill up at a big massive incline, and I'm having to work hard. I'm sucking in air. My lungs are sucking in air like crazy. The motor and current are the same thing. When this motor is taking it easy and it's not having to drive anything, it's only sucking in a little bit of current. But when this thing has to turn something big, it sucks in an awful lot of... It needs, it needs a, a healthy supply of current. Let's find out. So, now number one, remember, whenever you want to measure current, Number one, make sure that it's going between COM and the 10 amp. Number two, make sure that you have current on the multimeter. And number three, make sure you break the circuit and you put the multimeter inside of the circuit so it can measure the current. That's just the way it is. Now, I'm going to give it a little bit of, I'm going to give it a little bit of resistance. And it's having to work a little bit, alright? Now when I say I'm giving it a little bit of resistance, I'm forcing the motor to, to turn harder. And what's happening is as I hold this down, the, the motor is having to produce more torque. It's having to produce more turning force to counteract 
my resistance okay so that's what torque is torque is not how the speed stays the same but it's 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 having to turn harder okay let's have a let's go back be careful doing this okay No. I could get I could get one amp there. One amp is a, is, a, is a hell of a lot of current flowing in the circuit. What we can do what we can do in a situation like this is so number 1 Number one, don't destroy it. Don't do what I'm doing. I just want you to hold it a little bit and see this current increase. But what we could do is, why do we measure current? I'll tell you why. For, for us in the mechanical world, this is the main reason why. Because we, could, we can have a, a circuit like this. We can have some sort of power su supply. And it has a plus and a minus. Now... Give me a second. Let me check something out. The symbol for a fuse. A symbol for a fuse. Lovely. Um, okay, I can handle that. It looks like this. That's the... What the hell is a fuse? I'll t give me a second. We have... Uh, see... We have our motor. Now, when the motor is running, when our system is running correctly, the, the current should not be over one amp. All right? Imagine I connect this to a pizza dough mixer and Jose or, or um, who else? Victoria is in is 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 not bothered and they throw in a, a frozen ball of dough into the mixer and the mixer goes crazy what's going to happen to the power supply in the motor the power supply is going to want to, is going to want to give us more current because it requires more torque let's say we want to introduce some sort of a safety system we can introduce a thing called a fuse and what the fuse does is if the current in here goes above a certain amount what it does it, it cuts this circuit and what a fuse looks like a fuse looks like this it it look it has like a little it's a barrel and it's very 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 small oh, that's terrible looking and it has an, an electrical connection on, on on both sides of it and it has a tiny little wire going across and if the current flows once and what happens is that current flows on that wire if the current increases a certain amount it burns up this wire and we no longer have a connection that's what a fuse is called a safety fuse so what we're going to do is we're going to set, we're going to get a safety fuse of one amp in this circuit i don't have one here with me but if we put it in this circuit and i grab this really really hard the current in the circuit is going to get go once it goes over one amp that fuse is going to blow and we have no long and what happens is we no longer have a path for the current to flow and what it does is it kills the motor that's why we want to measure current um so hopefully that, 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 that has not confused the hell out of you. What do I want you to do? I want you to show me that you can, that I want to, I want to see your screen here and I want you to grab hold of this and, and I don't, if you, if you grab, if you grab hold of this, like the Incredible Hulk, you're going to break this motor and, um, and it's about 25 bucks. Okay. So don't do that i just want you to grab hold of this with a little bit of force make sure your safety glasses are on and i want you to notice that as this thing has as the motor has to produce more turning power or torque the current increases
and then let go and then watch the current decrease okay so hopefully that concept of current isn't blowing the heads off you so that's the first thing okay that's how to measure current it has to be in the circuit now the next thing is we're going to have we're going to learn how to change the direction of a DC motor. Okay, so hold on, let me pause that. I was just thinking to myself, it's a shame I didn't give you um, a fuse. If if some of you some of you might have fuses at home, you probably want to use something like a one amp fuse, and you could put it in the circuit. And trust me, it will blow. Um and. Uh, you know that 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 i should have done that so anyway look um the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the direction of a dc motor now you can you can um you can put this guy away for a second you can un unattach this and all we need is let's get rid of that all we need is the motor and Let's unplug this for a second. Number one, the first way you can you can change the direction. Now let's let's let me get a bit of tape going. A bit of electrical tape. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. So we can actually see the direction of it. I'm just using a piece of electrical tape, and you should all have that in your kits. All right. Something like that, all right? A little flag, a black flag. Put the red in the positive. Pigtail it for me. Black in the negative. Let's plug it in. All right, clockwise. Very good. Next thing, I'm going to unscrew both of these. Put the red in the the negative. Tighten it down. Put the black in the positive. Right. Plug it in. Anti-clockwise. If you think you're done now, that's not it. All right. Um, but essentially, that's how you change the direction of a DC motor. Now, hold on. In your kits, some of you, please God, will have this. This is a switch. All right. And some of you have, are lucky and have screw terminals. Other people are not so lucky and they have just um, spade terminals with a little hole in it, which is going to suck for you. Um, but I want you to, we're going to use this switch that we don't have to unplug this each time. We're going to be able to just do this and it will control the direction. But before we get into this, I feel like I just can't give you this switch without talking about switches a little bit. We need to talk about switches just a little bit, all right? And then we'll talk. We'll get into this bad boy. So let's put this. We'll unplug it, and let's let's get a nice clean page, and let's have a look. I want you to think about your house, and I want you to think about the the switch on the wall. The switch on the wall is a single pole, single throw switch what the hell does that mean we have a power supply and we have a lamp your switch it has an off and it has an on doesn't it and it looks like it looks like this and it can either it's either off or it's on right now this is called a single pole single throw let's start, start let's talk about the single throw 
The single throw means it's either it's either off or it's on. That's what that throw means. The single pull. It's written like that. Single throw. And this took me a while to get my head around too. The single pole means it's just one electrical connection. Even though you see two there, it's just it's one. It's one circuit. Okay. Right now it's off and the power is not flowing in the circuit. If we close it, power flows and the lamp turns on. This is a single pole, single throw. All right. This is called in your in your life. You only your you, the switches are quite simple, okay. But in in industry, there's a lot of different switches. So you just have to suck this up. And I'm sorry. This is called a single pole double throw, and what this means is, right now. It, 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 it has one circuit, a single pole coming in, but it has a double throw. It either can go to here or it can go to there. So power comes around and it goes through the lamp. Let's call this a lamp and let's call this, we're just going to call this a motor. Right now, the lamp is on. When the switch gets tripped, it comes down to there and it's no longer up here the motor is on in this type of system either the lamp or the motor is going to be always on it's either one or the other that's just the way it is this is called a double throw because it can go to two places okay it's a bit more complicated if this is blowing the head off you at the end of the day all we're using this for is to rev it's it's a fancy switch and all we're trying to do is be able to do forward and reverse of a dc motor that's it this one is a double pole single throw so we have our button here and it's connected to both of them and they're either both off or both on so this is a double pole single throw so we write this down double pole single throw the double pole it means it is two circuits now this could be this could be five volts and circuit b could be 100 volts could be two different circuits again let's call this a motor now when 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 the thing is off no power is flowing through the lamp or the motor if i press the button both of them come down at the same time and the lamp and the motor is on so this is it's a double pole which means there's two circuits and a single throw which means it has it, it can either be off or it can be on okay and then the last one which we have is a double pole double throw and it has two circuits running into it and it can go to two positions so it's either up here or it's down there and both of them will change at the same time if both of them are up there like that the lamp and the buzzer are on and if it gets tripped then it's the LED and the speaker are on so it's, it's either tripped like there or tripped like there this is called a double pole double throw don't worry if that if that do, if if none of that really made sense i'm just going to show you how to use this switch this is a double and, I, and i'm going to show you the wiring okay notice this first of all this is called a momentary switch okay right now if you let go of it it goes back 
to its neutral position. Okay, it's not like your light switch at home that if you turn it on, it stays on. We call that maintained. This is called a momentary switch. If you let go of it, it goes back to zero. But let's turn this around. It looks something like this. We have a, a, these two. If you pay attention to this, I promise you, it will make sense. I promise. And there, and there, and there, like so. All right. Ah. There's a wall in the switch here. These, none of these are connected. This side and this side are not connect, electrically connected to one another. If I click in this direction, what that does is it creates a temporary, let's check. I'm gonna go to check, this is called a continuity. If I connect the two probes together, first of all, let's pretend like I know what I'm doing. Let's connect this. This is only when you're measuring current. This is when you're trying to do everything else. Now why is it not making a sound? At least we've got light, I like that. Here we go. I hit the function button and this is a symbol for sound. Okay. Now, so let's see what happens when I, if I connect this one to here, let's see, does there, is there any connection across here? All right, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect this one to here. Okay, right now, there's no connection. I'm having to do it in the opposite direction. Okay, so I click this and those two are connected. And I'm after unscrewing the, the little screw. All right, let's see if I can get that screw back in. It's a bit of a pain. Get your screwdriver. Now I'll put it on the other one. And make sure you keep it away that they're not touching each other. Okay. So we can test to see whether this thing is do do is this is this actually doing a job. Ollie, shut up. No. <coughs> Oi! Did I ask for? All right. We're going to use this gizmo to try. Let me open the door. Here's dogs going nuts. So this is how how you use this bad boy. I'm going to. I'm going to connect this terminal with that and I'm going to connect just with a piece of wire I'm going to connect that terminal with that okay that's the first thing I do how do I do that no let, let's 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 draw this all of it out and I'm going to connect that to the motor and I'll connect this one to the motor, okay? I'm going to connect this wire. If I cross this, it doesn't mean that I'm connecting it in any way. I'm just, I've no, with nowhere to draw. And I'm going to connect this middle 
these ones to a power supply, our power supply. And you remember, ah, don't break the pencil. And you remember the pencil, the, the, the power supply has a positive and it has a negative. Okay. So imagine right now the electrons or the current wants to flow in here and it comes around and it comes up to here and it's got nowhere to go. But what happens if I actually push the button? This, I got a bandy one. What it does is it creates a temporary connection, and I'm going to use that with dashed lines to there, and it creates a temporary connection to there. Now let's follow this. So current comes around. It current always wants to go from positive to negative, so it's going to find a way. It comes around to this. It comes into this terminal. Some of it tries to go around this here, and it, it goes nowhere. So what does it do? It comes to here. It goes into the motor. It comes to here. Now, it, it can either go this way, which goes nowhere, or it can go to this one, and it comes back around. And that's the circuit. I wish I had... I'll get the blue marker going. So it comes around. It comes in there like... Is this black? It's bloody black. Hold on a second. Let's find a, a blue marker to make life easier for you. Um, I need different colour. I need different colour colour and pencil. But this will do the job. Don't worry. It comes around here like that. It goes into there over to the this terminal around the motor through there and back around i'm going to get some color pencils because this is too hard for you to understand screw that look what i found okay so this is what it looks like the internet's fantastic we have six connections here we have six connections here. This one is this. Okay? So and so on. Look. Your motor has two connections. Your power supply has two connections. And let's look. If I click the switch, we get a temporary. We get a connection like that. And a connection like that. And what happens? current flows like this okay and it gets to here it, it can't go down here this goes nowhere this isn't connected to anything so it comes around like so and goes around the circuit okay so current flows across this and it's going to turn in a clockwise direction If we flip it, if we let go, nothing is connected and no current flows in the motor. If I click it the other way, click, we have a connection here now. So what happens? Power goes from here, comes down to here. It flows. Now, these are not connected here. It flows across to here and it flows in this direction. And it comes back and it completes the circuit. That's look, that's hard to get your head around, I'm not gonna lie. But using a double pole, double throw switch, we can reverse cur we can reverse it. If if this if this circuit doesn't make any difference to you, if it doesn't make any sense to you, um let we could talk about it more. Um but I'm gonna show you how to wire this up. So the first thing is we want to wire that, this to here, like an X, and that to there. Let's do that. So I'm going to get this black wire. And I'm going to use my teeth again. And 
and I have two little I have conductor there and conductor there copper even though this doesn't look like copper to me and I'm going to just trim them off and I'm going to unscrew this 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 You probably think to yourself that Tim must hate us for making us do such a horrible thing. I, I, you know, I don't hate you. It just um, could have thought this out a little bit better. But look, you can do this. Things are tough sometimes. All right. I don't like. So anyway, there's. I've just connected that one to that one. All right, and I'm going to do the same. I wish I had better colors. Uh, I have a brown. This is a nice little brown. This will do the job. And I'm using my teeth again and a little pigtail. And I'm going to connect that one to that one. Some of you don't have these screw terminals. Shut up, you. The voltmeter is given out. Some of you don't have these screw terminals. You'll have something that has a hole in it. You want to feed the wire through it and twist it. Try and make sure that it doesn't short. Okay? That it doesn't make electrical connections that you don't want it to. Okay, now I have my X. I'm going to connect these two in the center to the power supply. Now, there's your power supply. Make sure it's unplugged. And second you stay there don't be causing trouble all right there you go that's a good lad now and then I'm going to take this so let's get a couple more colors going I have white and gray white and grey you don't have to use these colors anywhere you have will do the job will hopefully do the job and what am i what am i doing i'm 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 using my teeth be careful or you could use this to split to is that right word splice no just to, to what's the right word i'm taking the i'm taking the insulator off the wire Put it in the cons. Right. I'm going to put the white in the positive. I'm going to screw this in. You, the people who have the the 
spade terminals you're going to have to use a bit of electrical tape you're going to have to use, you're going to have to feed it in through the hole if you have soldering iron and you're an eet 118 feel free to use it in, right now so here i have my my gray and white and it really doesn't matter um i'm going to unscrew this and unscrew that I'm gonna feed this wire I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to do I'm using my little screwdriver to get that wire around the the screw and as it twists it should pull it around and there it goes and I'm gonna do that on the other side Look, there's easier ways of doing this. If I was, if I had you in my lab, we would we would have easier ways. But look, this is this this will do. Okay, now the power supply comes in, and it's been fed to these two cent central central terminals. I have an X going across there. The last thing I need to do is you can connect either side, either this side or this side to the motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna un unscrew this and unscrew this. I'm gonna get my motor going. I'm going to wrap use my teeth there I'm gonna I'm gonna pigtail these two wires together So it doesn't really matter which side. It, it, it why doesn't it matter? Because it would it, it's gonna still it's still gonna reverse, okay? So I'll connect that to there. These two, and I'll connect these two. here this is pretty hard stuff we're doing okay I'm gonna plug this in let's see does it even work course it works okay no power that's anti-clockwise oh you did not anti-clockwise anti-clockwise oh you did not so what happened there Interesting. Let's have a look. Oh, look at this. Look what I did. You need to have an X here. This this opposite needs to be connected. And these look look at my black wire. My black wire is coming over to the same side and my brown is coming to the same side. So I need to flip these around. Let's unplug it.
I'm an awful numpty. And I'll put the red on the other side. Okay. So, the black and the red are going to the motor like they always do. The power supply is going to the two center ones. And then you see the, the brown is connecting this one to that and the black wire the black jump these are called jumper wires is connecting that one to there now i bet you a thousand dollars this is going to work i'll give everyone in the class a thousand dollars if this does not work all right watch stand up will you So that way is clockwise and anti-clockwise. So we're using a simple switch to, 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 to control the direction of the DC motor. Um, the trick is, is if you can really get your head around this circuit, the circuit that I had shown you. Um, you're going to have a hard time making these little connections. That's going to frustrate you, but you know, there are, you're going to have to do worse things when you leave the college and you, you get it. This sort of intricate BS, uh, it does drive you crazy, but that's what you're, that's what you're going to be dealing with. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully the double pole, double throw stuff has, it didn't confuse the crap out of you. That is, that is objective number two, and that's tricky enough. Um, objective number three, and I'll show you. Let me just pause this here for a sec. You're probably thinking to yourself, like, this is a mechanical systems course. Why is Tim wrecking our head with this electrical stuff? Um, they both go hand in hand, unfortunately, but I'm not going to be blasting your heads with too much more electrical things. I'm going to leave that to the electrical class. Um, we just you just need to be able to control you just need we just you need to be able to understand how the motor gets power That's the main thing and how to be able to control it, how to be able to control its speed and how to be able to control its direction So that that's going to be the last of the electrical stuff that I hopefully will cover in this course The third part of your lab is to build this simple rig now um, I don't know how well you can see this this is something that Scott, your own very, your own Scott Mikulski, Mikulski uh, designed for me. Um, it's, it's, this is the base, big base plate that everyone has. Is there any way I could make this bigger so you can actually see it? Um, I need to increase the height of this little, I'm going to put this cup upside down. I just spilled the coffee, but it's all right. You have your big base plate. These are standoffs. These are your A32 screws. Okay, they don't have to be very long. You're going to connect. Don't you slide off there now. Hopefully in your kit, you have a, a huge, a U-shaped um, channel like this. Scott, I'm guessing, cut it. How many? Well, I see one, two, three, four, five. It's 15 squares across. In your kit, you do have a file. Please, hopefully, you have a U-shaped channel that's around this size. It would make life easier. If it's a bit longer and it comes out, it's not the end of the world. If you, you if you don't have, um, I want you to contact me if this, if, if, if I ask you to use a hacksaw to cut this, um, I make an assumption that you should be able to do that, but maybe you can't, or maybe you don't have the tools. Um, 
if you have a long piece and you want to cut it back um a hacksaw let me pause it and get and show you what a hacksaw looks like i'm just thinking to myself this piece does not have to be exactly 15 if it was 17 it doesn't matter you have, it, even if it extends out like this it's fine um but um this is what a hacksaw looks like and it's very very useful for cutting it's very useful for cutting metal it has these fine teeth i don't know if you've ever seen a wood saw it has much bigger teeth but this hacksaw will cut through that metal like that okay what i will typically do is i will use a clamp like this and i'll clamp this piece on my table at the corner of my table and i will use the hacksaw and i'll do it very very carefully wearing my safety glasses um it, it, it it's definitely going to help if everybody can can figure out a way that they can cut some of this metal i i'm sorry that, that i'm making you do this um and it's not really fair of me to assume that you're all going to have hacksaws at home don't try not if you are going to cut metal um see if there's someone in your house an older brother an older sister a parent or something or a cut I, I don't know if you're if you're really stuck email me and we'll figure out a way um but it would be it would be helpful if you could somehow we, you, you you are going to have to modify this metal a little bit uh, if that's a major problem we'll deal with it um i'll cut it for you if i have to um and i'll drive it up to your house but anyway um essentially this is just a platform i'm bloody overthinking it uh, at the bottom here is your motor okay let's kind of take this off the motor is connected using these two screws this long piece is in your linear um, it'll be in the linear actuation I don't know what it's called but it's in a linear box a linear slide box this linear this linear piece see these two see these two nuts that one there and that one there that's what's holding this in place these are 632 screws that hold the motor to this and then there's a shaft going through it what's nice about this design is it's it's very easy for us to swap out and hopefully you're going to have all these little these little shafts i'm going to take lots of photographs of this so you can see it um what we can do is it allows us to very very easily have different um gear trains and see how they all work it's a beautiful design from scott the only thing i would say here is we have a little bit of a dive board a dive board going on here there'd be no harm in, in putting another standoff between here and here to give this some rigid rigidity okay um i'm going to take some photographs of this i want you to try and put this together um apologies if the the double pole double throw switch is blowing the head off you um do your best with it all right um all right guys look i hope you're doing well and um i'll be around on on wednesday uh, when the lab is on so don't get stressed out and, and if you need extra time that's fine too all right but you're everyone is doing a good job and i'll talk to you later part of your lab the last bit of your lab is to build this simple rig okay um this long piece will be in your linear slide uh, it, it's definitely in that big long tube that's in your toolbox um this is the base plate you need four long um standoffs um to just lift this up if you don't have standoffs you should be able to just build you need something that just builds this platform up underneath of it the motor is connected to the plate this long linear slide is connected via a couple of bolts the two black bolts um, Scott is using um, He's using a, a bearing, like so, and there is a, do you see that? That's a, 
a shaft collar that is just holding this shaft in place. He's using two 632 screws to hold the motor in. And then he has a load of spacers, the black spacers, I can see three of them. And then another shaft collar and then a gear. And then this, this, this can just, this all slides up. I can put a gear on there very easily and then my way to measure the speed. And then these, thing, these things just slide. Let's see if I can take one off. What, what does it look like? Is there, is there... What's holding this in? So this thing is just threaded into that, in, it's threaded into that green thing like so. There's no nut underneath it. Okay, so that's just threaded in. So we have a bearing. And two shaft collars. So see if you can build this. Don't worry about trying to use it. But uh, we're going to use that in lab three.